this has got to be one of the great cars of the, of the classic Mustang era. I mean, a drag pack, 69 big block convertible, only eight built. My interest has been in 71 uh, Mustangs and uh, particularly Boss 351 cars and the 429 drag pack cars. And so I wanted to find a 71 429 convertible and they're, they're, they're pretty rare. I, I have one now and, and in fact you've, you've shot pictures of it and it's appeared in magazines. Um, but you know they just they just built you know a couple handfuls of those cars so i found one in canada that was a a, a 71 drag pack drag pack convertible and and it, you know they built like eight or nine or those cars i mean very extremely rare and so when you start looking at um the ford mustang or the shelby's and you you're looking for a extremely rare it's a it's a big block and it's a convertible and it's and they're really rare so you really never see these at auctions. These aren't cars that just show up at auctions. You have to find them. Anyway, I went to Canada. I went all the way to Calgary, Alberta, to look at this '71 car this guy had, and we just we just couldn't make a deal um, on the car. And then we're talking, and he says, "Well, I got another Mustang convertible you might be interested in, and and make you a little better deal on that." I'm really, and so it, so he had a a, a '69 um, 428 drag pack convertible. Can we get it down and look at it then? Show us everything about it. Well, yeah, um, it'll take me a second to get it down. Um, I gotta, I have this lift. I gotta, I gotta get the car down off the lift. But yeah, okay. we'll go do that. But anyway, we got the car. Had some information. The guy had owned it for twenty something years. Had been in this hangar that long. Wasn't running at the time. We, it's running now. In the paperwork, there was a, a he had bought it from a from Peter Clute, legendary motor car guy. And but at the time, it was the his car business was called the Shelby Shop and it was up in Canada and um, the, and the title was still in, in, in Peter's name when I when I got the car so uh, Shelby shop and uh, anyway so it was it was quite an interesting um, little event and uh, in so fact I've even talked to Peter Clute about the car he remembered it I'll get the bargain for here I'll read off some. it's way cool in it Jerry So this car is an original paint car. It's had, uh, um, it's not pretty as far as you know having beautiful restored paint on it. Um, but finding one of these in original condition is is almost non-existent. Um, many of the people who have looked at it have told me that they uh, they would never paint this car. But um, so who are the big big heavy hitters that are trying to buy this? Oh, I can't say. Okay. Um, so it's a 428 drag pack car, and of course it's got a traction lock that was factory. It is a C6, um, black power top, glass backlight, AM radio, power steering, power disc brakes, competition suspension. That's it. Okay, let's see under the hood. Is it all original under the hood too? Yeah, we um, like I said, this car was not running when we got it. The trunk was full of parts. And we put it, we put everything back on it to get it back to uh, having its correct parts under the hood. There was a little bit of auto part stuff, you know, that was not correct. We changed all that out. Um, but it's a uh, that that's this is what it would have come with. It would have come with the, uh, the cooler, the drag pack cooler. Would have moved the horns over to uh, the other side. Um, it's got power steering on it. It's got the correct valve covers. Correct breathers. What's the odometer reading? You know, I, I don't recall. Well, we'll look at it when we get it out. Can you crank it up and fire it and pull it out here where we can look at it really good? Well, I might be able to crank it up, but um, let me hold that. But it's it won't take it won't be. Jerry, I got to uh, probably have to prime it because it's been sitting here. I got to put wrenches down, so it's going to be a second. Okay. These two ramps over here. Yeah, I'm gonna dump both those ramps. There's not a battery in it, so I gotta get a battery put in it. I didn't know you were wanting to start this car. Oh, they all would love to hear these things. This thing really big, big time. 
Man, you're not making it easy on me. like the starter solenoid did is not doing anything. And they built eight of those cars. Um, so this guy was in Calgary and he had these cars stored in an airplane, airplane hangar. And as a matter of fact, the way it was, they were all up on a wall, big tall wall because it was airplane hangar. And he had pallet racks that these cars were stacked on. And so he took me out there and this, this 69 was in this pallet rack, three cars high. And you had to use like, um, chain boomers to get it up off the rack and then take the the, the 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 slats out so you lower the car down then you had to put the slats back in above it so the pallet rack would stay have integrity and it was it was a little bit scary when you're up there walking around looking at this car it was the whole thing was like moving a little bit it was it was a little bit spooky we won't use that term holy grail though will we uh maybe no we could uh, would you it, say this if, is if there holy... was ever a car to use it on in the mustang world i would think that this would be it it's like the the top one. I mean, if you break the Mustang world down, most people consider 69 as the favorite and the best looking. If you break it down into big block and it's, and then convertible, it's kind of like the, and what would be your most desirable color. I mean, it's kind of like the top of the heap. You know, I was at the, uh, that show in Chicago, the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals a couple years ago when they had all those Hemi Cuda convertibles. And I think they had, what did they have, 20, 20, almost 20 cars over a couple year build and almost all of them. It's pretty impressive to see them, Hemi Cuda convertibles. There's almost an equal number of these Mustangs and they just, they haven't got any attention because nobody, um, there haven't been any traded hands. This where you, this where you uh, cross your fingers, hang on. Have you fired up and drive it out then, huh? Well, it fired right up pretty easy. Yeah, it, it, it did. It, it took a little bit of effort once I got it to get, you know, uh, the typical the typical things. You know, you had to do brake lines and fuel lines and because and, um, it hadn't been ran in 20 years. You know, clean out the gas tank, um, you know, clean out the motor good, new fresh oil. Um, 
but then there were a few just a few parts we had to get that just things some things on it just weren't exactly correct and and but this is basically the components that would have come on this car uh, and they've not, nothing's been restored but this is the matching number motor and the whole works huh? the motor matches the, the transmission is not because it was drag race so they obviously took the factory one out and built a, one for the racing and the rear end in the car is not the correct one and I've got the correct rear end over here to go in it I've got a transmission over there it's the correct one when we get ready to put that put that stuff back together so these were 31 spline axles this is a 391 drag pack car um, C6 automatic and like I said, the battery had been moved to the trunk. So this had some life as a drag racer. And uh, Peter Clute, who'd owned it with uh, the Shelby shop, that was his business back then. I believe he's out of Toronto, Canada. And I was told that this car was driven from Toronto to Calgary and then put in that warehouse 20 something years ago. So. Okay. The guys are looking at Mustangs and what makes them collectible. And you look at um, the big block cars, that's the fewer of those, those cars are worth more money. And then if you break that down a little bit further, it's the it's the convertible cars that they had very little production of. Some people have a Cobra Jet convertible. Those are rare. Yeah. Well, and it, you know, we talked about that earlier about um, Cobra Jet convertibles. Yeah. Um, you know, like once a year, you'll see one in an auction, Cobra Jet convertibles. And they may have built 50 of those or something in any particular year between uh, 69, 70, and 71. I think the 71 Cobra Jet convertibles, they built like... 30. Here's one right here, and that car is a, is a Cobra Jet convertible, but it's a four-speed, and they built nine of those, so it kind of breaked it down to a four-speed. Uh, the, the 69, this black one, is a super Cobra Jet convertible, and some people just, would, when they say, oh yeah, a friend of mine's got one of those. He, I said, he's got, a, he's got a drag pack convertible? Well, it's a Cobra Jet convertible. And I said, well, just it's just the, the difference is night and day. I said, it's like trying to compare a Hemi Cuda convertible to a Hemi Cuda with a 440. I mean, the the, the, the the production numbers are substantially bigger for the 440 cars and the, and it's just, you know, the, the top of the peak and the performance and the options. And, you know, the, the Super Cobra Jet car uh, has all the internal Ford stuff to handle that, you know, the drag pack rear ends and it was intended to be raced. It's got a, it's got an external balancer on the crankshaft and um, Ford's components and, you know, higher compression and it's a substantially improved motor over a Cobra Jet. Um, and they didn't build very They built eight for the 69 model here and that's one of them right there. And, and for the Cobra, and the Cobra Jet convertible, I'm not sure how many it is. You can easily look it up. It's 50 or something like that. So um, production numbers are different. You can find those Cobra Jet convertibles. If you want a super Cobra Jet convertible, you'll probably never see another one. It's where you, it's where you uh, cross your fingers. Hang on.